Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. There was a pre-budgetary meeting for the 2025 for the you know the liberal waste of dollars and misplacement of mismanagement of our Canadian tax dollars while they send it all to the International Monetary Fund to be washed. And one of the conservatives, uh, there was a, a member of the Canadian Trucking Association there, and they asked him a question that I think is very pertinent to our daily life. MP Pat Kelly asks the uh, Vice President of the Canadian Trucking Association the impact of the carbon tax. And the answer will open your eyes to the real state of the damage. Let's just have a listen. Uh, thanks. To the Trucking Association, uh, so uh, how, how much does the carbon tax cost your industry? Thank you for the question. So uh, our estimates are, uh, at least in the, the 2024 year, it will add an additional $2 billion to the cost of, of trucking services. That's approximately, if I was to break it down um, for you on a per truck basis, that's adding an, an additional fifteen dollars to $20,000 per year per truck in fuel costs. From a competitive standpoint or a supply chain, it, uh, it's, it's grossly inflating. Uh, grossly inflating the cost of the supply chain. Can your customers afford to just pay more for your services? So uh, in, in our world, uh, typically those costs are passed along, um, you know, passed along to our customers, which in turn are passed along to Canadians and in turn make our economy less less productive and, and less competitive. Now, you heard him. $2 billion this year on the Canadian trucking alone. That is the the impact of the carbon tax that it's having on your pocketbook, on the on the cost of inflation and on the cost of the products that you buy. So, in case you don't get it, I'll break it down for you. Buddy goes and fills his truck with gas, and then he has to trans he has to calculate per mile how much that's going to cost to move whatever product it may be. Now, the Canadian Trucking Association is one aspect. There are lots of them out there. There's regional ones like Ontario, Manitoba, things of that nature. What I want you to concentrate on is the idea that the grocery stores typically have their own fleets. That's why when you see them go by, they always have the fancy painted like Walmart has its own fleet. And I think uh, the Atlantic Pacific Company is the, one of the largest, um, is the largest privately owned trucking fleet in, in North America. And the Atlantic Pacific company owns a lot of grocery stores. So these guys are actually going to be calculating their costs for transportation from all of their various markets to or warehouses and storehouses to the grocery store as well. And they're going to be having the same type of expenses. $20,000 extra on gas, on fuel, on what do you, what do you he'll refer to as a propulsion for moving whatever product happens to be put on the back. Now that's UPS, that's Purolator, that's the grocery stores, that's the furniture stores, that's the makeup, that's everything you can think of. Everything we use to move things in this country, into this world, is powered by fuel, by diesel typically, because diesel has a higher explosive rate, which creates more energy, which then makes it more energy efficient. And so you can move more product with it being energy efficient because the uh the drag factor the air factor the resistance the friction that we put downward on the tires causes a lot of um, energy loss and that's important and the reason that i add that is so that you can appreciate why electric is not a good idea because the drag on an electric motor creates the energy of the battery to drain faster this is just the, the science of it so that's why there's, there's no way in the world that we're ready to move all of our fleets over to electronic electric systems. Even if we, were, even if we had the greatest electrical grid in the, in the world where we have charging stations. And remember, most charging stations in the world are powered by diesel right now. Again, we come back to this unattainable goal by the liberal government that if they were to just take one minute to speak to any expert at all, they would understand what, you know, the, why Canadians are so upset. $20,000 per truck, per truck. That adds an additional cost to everything you buy, everything you buy, whether it be furniture, food, makeup, clothing, 
it doesn't matter what it is. It got to your house on a truck in nine out of 10 times, unless you made it yourself. And even then the material that you used to buy probably got there on a truck. So we can see now officially what they mean when they talk about the, the, when the parliamentary budgetary officer mentions that it's having a, a stronger impact on the economy than what the rebate is putting in your pocket and all of that um, talking nonsense that the liberal government tries to make you believe that they try to gaslight you with. There's no way in the world that, that your um, t- carbon tax rebate is covering the, the impact of that, the damage that that $2,000 per truck per month is, is, is adding to the bottom line of everything that you buy. There's absolutely a lot of, of proof that that's causing uh, inflation to go up through the roof. Why things have gone four or five times what they were just a few years ago. Then the conservative MP asks him another question. Uh, Pat Kelly is the MP's name, asks him an additional question pertaining to the carbon tax and its impact on the industry of trucking, which, as I just explained, is the largest industry on earth. All right. So you recommend that this, this tax be, uh, be scrapped? At a minimum, pause it for four years. Uh, until until we can get a handle on whether or not uh, we have alternative fuel sources in the or power propulsion sources in the long term, but no, I'll, ideally the tax goes away. Yeah, you mentioned that, that no such propulsion systems exist for long haul trucking. Is that that's correct? So so diesel is king right now. Uh, the technology just isn't there, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna need some more time to to figure this out. Uh, and and again, hence our our concern with uh, with the rationale for the carbon tax. Yeah, well, th- thanks. There there are no alternatives for long haul delivery, and uh, so so you don't have a choice. You just have to pay it and pass it on to everybody in the supply chain uh, to the point where uh, that that it reaches consumers. And that's exactly how it works. Now understand that the truck is just one factor. Let me lay out for you typically what's going to happen if you're talking about, say, corn on the cob. Now, the corn seed has got to be delivered, right? So the truck that brought that seed, which is not, you know, like a little cute little thing you see on a cartoon, you need a tractor to move it. So the tractor and the trailer that brought it to you are both being charged carbon tax on the fuel they put in. Then the tractor that's driving around the farm loading up the um because you won't be doing that with the same two tractors right you'll have one that will move your stuff around it'll be the small guy and then the big one that you see on tv with you know that's huge the combine that will be a completely different vehicle which will also have to cost money on the carbon tax for putting fuel in it then you say just let's say for the sake of argument that you don't have to put spray on it and all of the watering and all of the things that you have to do, but you you do need to, right? Those are all powered by, even if they're even if they're not done by machines, because a lot of irrigation can be set up. It's powered by a pump that's running on diesel. Then the tractor's got to pull it out. Then the silo's got to dry it again. All done with diesel and all. Well, there could there is some argument that maybe the um, silo is being done with natural gas. Nonetheless, there's still a carbon tax put on that cost. Then the guy's got to get it to the off the farm and given again put on a truck brought to the facility where the lights are on and all the kinds of things that are running again all on carbon tax fuel then you want to package it and deliver it to the the individual stores carbon tax all on the fuel then the carbon tax is going on your gasoline that took you to get to the store and back again and that's just a, a, a very rudimentary example of how your Um, eight out of 10 Canadians are getting rich off of the carbon tax that's going back in their pocket is a complete falsity. There's absolutely no way in the world, whatever it is for a family of four in your region is recouping the expenses of what I just described. And let's consider that I left out a bunch of stuff, right? If you're, if you need maintenance on that vehicle, there's carbon tax on the truck that comes to fix it. There's carbon tax on the, and it's just the fuel, the fuel that brought the tires you might need to replace, the oil filters, the carbon tax on the disposal of the oil. There's a carbon tax on the oil that there's, these machines require extensive lubrication. They have lots of moving parts. And one of the, you, oftentimes you have to watch that more than you have to watch anything else. And any kind of repair that you need to, to place on these, on this equipment is going to be, ultimately in its supply chain 
paying carbon tax that is not calculated in your eight out of 10, we're making you rich by putting it back in your pocket. The rebate that they mentioned, there's no, it's just not covered. It's not covered and the farmer didn't get a check back for all of that, the carbon tax he had to pay for the manufacturing of your food. The driver who moved your product around the Amazon company truck, the Puro guy, just think of any truck that you can think of in your life, school buses, they all had to pay this tax. And that is not money, though that tax is going into the government, it's not coming back into your pocket. And it is costing you money at the end, right? Because they can't get the corn on the cob to the store and then what, they're going to eat the difference? No, they're, they're, gonna, they're in it to make some money, right? And just like everybody, they work hard for their money. And so those calculations are all passed along to you. Now you just remember that the next time you see the government try to look you straight in the eye and tell you that, that it's all a, a gigantic conspiracy. This is right from the industry, right from the guy who's drive, who, who, who has truck drivers working for him. What does he stand to gain, right? I mean, the costs are the costs are the costs, right? The question was, is it cost, is it making your manufacturer, is it causing your truck drivers to have a higher expenditure on doing the job that they were same job they were doing before the implementation of this tax? And his answer was yes, $2 billion a year. And by and he goes on to say that by the, they project that by the time it gets to 2030, his industry will be, be impacted $4 billion a year. And that's coming out of the pockets of every single solitary, one of the 99%. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.